Okay, this is a Spring Boot application for IBM's DB2. So I'm going to show you how to set that up and walk through it. Now the DB2 database driver, you need a repository for that if you want to use the public repo. And you can see on line 28 there on my Maven Palm, I've added in the uh, repository from IBM. So we can go out and uh, get that DB2 jar file, which is, is quite nice to be able to get it from a, a public repository, even though it's not Maven Central, we do have to set up a, a separate repository for that. Now, if you're in an enterprise setting, you might want to add this into your own internal Maven repository. But for a public repository, you will need to add in this repository as I've done on line 28 to 33 there. And then we are able to pick up that dependency on line 36 for, and this is for the DB2 database driver. And the, the rest is uh, pretty straightforward for Spring Boot. Line 43, we're bringing in the starter for Spring Data JPA, so we're going to be leveraging that. Line 47, we have Time Leaf. And then line 51, uh, we have the, the starter web. So pretty, pretty simple web application here that we are, are dealing with for DB2. Now, I'll give you a quick tour of the application itself. We have a, a single entity, uh, no, nothing too complicated here. We are just as a, a product entity, it has a, an ID value, description, price, and image URL. So not, not a lot of brains to this. Now, we are using Spring Data JPA. So we've set up a CRUD repository for product. And then this is just a simple CRUD repository. In case you're not familiar with Spring Data JPA by extending this out, it gives us uh, basic repository commands where we can save, find, check if something exists, get a count, or delete an object. And it, this is all provided by Spring Data JPA. So by creating that interface at runtime, Spring Data JPA is going to give us that implementation of the, the repository, which we'll, we'll be able to work with. Now, just going up from there, I've coded a product service, which gives us the, the basic CRUD operations that we're going to be utilizing within the web application. And good habit to always code to an interface, especially when you're writing Spring stuff. And here is the product service implementation. And you can see that it's taking in the uh, repository bean. And again, this is the product repository that's going to be provided by Spring Data JPA. And this is kind of a, a simple facade over working with the repositories. And the service, we are going to wire him into our controller. So I have a product controller here. And the product service gets wired into the, the controller. And then we're also using a product form. So, and, the, and this is a, a converter there on line 24. So I am using a command object pattern. And this is a simple converter, so if you're not familiar with Spring, they do have a converter interface which allows us to do type conversion. So we're going to convert from a product form or from a product to a product form, and we'll be utilizing that in our display on on the uh, web application. And then finally, here's the actual product form. So this is what's going to get bound to our web application, the, the forms. So we'll use this as a, a backing bean. Some people would call that. Now, let's see here, take a quick look at the template. And if you're not familiar with Timeleaf, this is a basic Timeleaf template. So this is the list. And I do have an entire course on uh, Timeleaf and the templating language and what you can do with Timeleaf. So pretty, pretty simple stuff here. We are going to list and it will iterate over a list of products. So this is what's going to come up initially. Uh, here's the, the product form. We can see the time life commands there as well to see what's going on. And this will display the, the form that we'll be working with. And then finally, a, a show screen to show an individual product. So not, nothing, nothing too complicated here. Uh, the next thing we want to look at before running it is application.properties. And point out a couple things here on line 5 is the data source URL. Uh, of course, you want to make this DB2 specific. Uh, Localhost and DB2 by default will run on port 50,000. 
and I am using a, a database of examples. So you need to set that example text to whatever DB2 database name you are working with. And then six and seven are passwords, use RD and password. And then finally the DB2 driver. And a couple of niceties here that we're gonna have on line 16, we'll log out the SQL that's being utilized. And then the Hibernate setting, so we are doing a create drop, so we'll create and drop the database every time we run. Hibernate dialect here. So I am gonna go ahead and run it. So the, the biggest thing that you're gonna be setting are probably these three lines here as far as your particular settings for DB2. Now let's go ahead and, and run this. I'm just gonna run the application and we'll, we'll go through a little demonstration. It's a fairly light spring application, so it does come up pretty quickly. We can see that we did get a SQL error back, but it looks like we uh, it was just a warning and the database table was created. So let's jog over to the application now. I have it running in Chrome. So I just re refresh this. So there's no products list, so I can come up with a new product. Give them a price of 22 uh, image URL. So there's no no validations on this at all. It's pretty pretty simple. So it, you can see that that does get created. We get a product ID listed. I can come back to the list screen and we can see that that new product is there. I can come in and edit that and let's say new product 333. And we'll do 777 there on the URL just to see a change. We can see that did change, in fact. And I'll come back to the list screen, and we can see that the, the changes did did uh, occur. And I can even come in and do a delete operation. And since there's no products to list, we, we don't list out the, the table, but we still have the link to create a, a product. So pretty pretty simple little web application using IBM's DB2 on the back end via Spring Boot.